one of the main things I really did want to talk about is you um, being a father and, and being a new father, which, you know, some of our, our, our listeners and guests and, or, you know, listen, I guess they're family. Some of the family in the comment section was um, congratulating you on your new bundle of joy. Uh, so congratulations, my brother. Like you have entered the realm of fatherhood. You have graduated. Welcome. It's the only thing I have you on is having older kids and more. <laughs> um, man, what's that like? It, you know, I love my mom, right? Uh, there's nothing I wouldn't do for her. I, you know, you do things for your mom, like, you know, you help her pay for bills or you come by and fix stuff around the house or, you know, have I gifted her guns before? Yeah, I've gifted her several. Um, I love my wife. I didn't know that I could love anything that much as when my son was born and I got to hold him for the first time. It was immediate. It was fast. And it was, it was intense. And there's like, I can have the, the worst day at work, you know, like the, you know, uh, I could have a day where, man, I thought today was, I was going to get fired. Um, I can have that kind of day. I could have a day where, you know, it was just, uh, just busting my butt. Or I can have a day where, you know, you're out on the range for like, I don't know, 12, 14, 15 hours. Um, and just, you know, just out there working or teaching or, you know, stuff. And you could be drained. Mm -hmm. And then you come home and you see that kid and it just makes it all worth it. It's, it's, it's a feeling that's super hard to describe. But man, like every father out there gets it. There's nothing. There is nothing I wouldn't do for that kid. If he needed my right arm, I'd give it to him. Not a, not a second's hesitation. So it's a whole new world, man. I, I, it it actually made me kind of wonder why I, I it's hard for me to wonder that now because I don't think I was going to be as emotionally and financially ready for it if I did earlier in life but yeah. I'm glad I'm I'm glad I'm having a kitten now and I'm glad I'm having it with my wife with you know a woman that I love and it's just nice man yeah. no that's that's awesome I'm I'm really happy to hear you articulate these things. And I know it's still so new. And the truth is almost four years in for myself, there are days that are rough and people are talking back and there, there's a moment that happens where you have a three major and um, they're saying something super sassy and kind of like, yo, that's rude. I should not put up with that. Cause if I put up with that, like, you know, what's going to happen. Like they're going to keep doing that, but yeah. like, you can't just help us smile. Like, Oh, you really said that? That's so, Oh my gosh, that's so rude. <laughs> and you just kind of laugh to yourself and you're like, no, don't, don't laugh. Don't, don't, don't love this moment. Don't, no, don't say that <laughs> bad. <laughs> and you like, you don't want to do that. Like there's something in you and maybe that's just my temperament. Right. But there's something in you that, that, that loves even the bad moments. And yes, there's some moments that are like truly awful. And, you know, for me and my wife, we, after it's over, we sit back and we say like, Hey, you know what? Like even the bad moments are worth it because like we could not have her. There are evil people in the world and there are tragic events, like life changing events that, that occur every day to good people. And the fact that, you know, she's here right now. And we have to put up with all the crap to get to the good moments. You know, can we skip to the good part? Like, <laughs> it's okay. Like we can, we can deal with it because, you know, she's perfectly imperfect. Like she loves to dance and she loves to laugh and she's so corny. Where did she get that? Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> like stop hanging out with my wife. Golly. <laughs> but, and like, it's, it's just, and then the, the younger one, like, we, we've been on a dancing kick like lately. Like we'll put on, I put on like praise break music and it was like so perfect. <laughs> like like I, I, not, I don't even really appreciate that music like that. Like, but I just did it just to see what would happen. And they started just doing the whole thing. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, this is like the human experience. <laughs> it was perfect. Like just put a, just put a church outfit on him. Like, anyway, I'm, I'm saying all that. Cause I'm, I'm appreciating this moment with you. And I will, I will ask you this. 
you know, I, I don't want you to go into like John Wick puppy mode, but like as somebody who's trained hell of a lot with firearms and you know, that's been part of who you are. Like it's like actually a part of your identity. Like if you, whether you want to believe it or not, whether that's a healthy thing or not, like it, it is part of who you are, part of it, you know, it's deeper than that, but it is part of who you are. Does that in any way impact the way you parent in the way that you see your children and the way that you train? Like how do those things speak to each other in, in a positive way rather? Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. So one of the things that really kind of helped me out with, uh, with training, as far as, you know, going to classes, teaching classes, attending classes, is that you end up starting to build a tribe. You know what I mean? Like mm. you start, you find yourself inside of a community of people that are very much like-minded and that have similar goals and aspirations. And so you can bounce ideas off of them and you can ask them for, you know, um, help to figure out problems. And also you can ask them to, you know, for sometimes if you need it, even some, some emotional support. So, you know, the thing is though, as an instructor and as a, as an armed citizen, and also as a former Marine, I have to, you know, I have to be aware of the dangers that are out there for, you know, against my family. Um, there's, there's continuing education. There's things that I continue to research. Uh, there's still crime data. There's still, you know, uh, video footage and people do very, very terrible things to people. Um, doesn't matter how great of a person you are or, you know, uh, whether or not you had it coming to you or anything like that. Um, there's still very, very bad people out there. There's still psychopaths and, you know, uh, people out there that will do some terrible, terrible things to your, to your people, to your, to your family. Um, the first time I ever heard about something like this was I went to a Tom Gibbons class and he talked about the Pettit murders, P E T I T the Pettit murders. Um, you can even read up about it on, on uh, Wikipedia. There's a Wikipedia article and the stuff that those two uh, psychopaths did to their family is absolutely appalling. It'll make you lose sleep at night. So yeah, like it's, wow. it's bad. So I'm not really going to go into it because even talking about it can be traumatizing to some of you viewers. Yeah. It can be traumatizing. So, and it could be a trigger thing too. It could be a trigger sure. for people well. who have gone through something like that. So, um, but, uh, you know, to understand that there's that kind of evil out there, uh, the kind of evil that you can never put your mind into it would like, there would never be a world where, you know, Aaron would actually do any of the stuff that, you know, this, these people did. And, you know, those are the people that we know about, you know, yeah. that they revealed themselves, you know. Um, so what it does is it drives me more to upgrade my software, probably even more than I upgrade, you know, all the, the hardware, you know what yeah. I mean? So that's yeah. that's perfect. That's such a perfect way to say that. And I, I hate to ruin it by by pointing out how perfect <laughs> the statement was. I'll tell you how being a father has impacted my training and impacted my instincts even. Um, somebody was kind of going on a rant about like masculinity and how we have kind of a perverted view of it at times, which at times, um, at times. But my, they said something about how, oh, dads expect to get the, the biggest plate because not because they really did anything, but because they, you know, they went to work all day and they came back and they're expected to, you know, and this was maybe kind of a derogatory way of saying what they were saying, but they, they, they're expected to go basically fight the monsters in the dark and that gives them the right. And I don't, I don't view myself that way. Like, okay, yeah, I went to work. You know, I don't, I don't feel like I, I work as hard as a lot of guys out there. Just you see construction workers just busting their butt in the sun, and you're like, "I was in the sun for five minutes, and I want to die, um, sir." You can have the biggest piece of meat. You got this. You know, <laughs> like I don't. I'm not going to say anything to you, but I I look at my I look at myself and I say, "Well, reality is, 
I don't expect an award for this, you know, because this is this is the job. But you call me anytime you think there's a monster in the dark, whether it's there or not. And you, it better not be there when I get there. I'll tell you that because <laughs> I can't help you. Like I, I tell people all the time, like if you ever find my address, don't show up to my house. Like I'm, I'm asking you so nicely, do not do that and do not make me feel in any way that the family's in danger because I can't help you at that point. I'm helping you right now. I can't help you if you do something stupid like that. Yeah. Like you, you yeah. pushed all your chips in. <laughs> you really want to, you want to bet like that? You want to play with your life? Like don't do that. And this is not a threat, <laughs> but I'm making some, some really strong promises that like, it's not going to go the way any of us wants it to go. And so point being is I'll be that guy. I'll go in the dark. And I'm not saying that to say I'm on some sort of power fantasy. And I think a lot of anti-gunners think that getting a gun or watching movies that are have strong like male masculine or have a lot of like guns or action energy puts you on some sort of power fantasy. And that may be true for some people, but for me, it's not about that at all. I know where I'm deficient, but I know where I'm good and I know what I can do. And, um, to the monsters, in the, to the monsters in the dark, don't be there when I get there. That's just, that's just it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Quick in the comment section, my guy, he said, uh, my son's joy trumps anyone else's joy. And that's been since day one. It's a different kind of love. Yeah. 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 It really is. Um, regarding, um, your son and being a father, I know you said it's made you maybe care a little bit less about the hardware. Yeah. Maybe you're not going out here and buying this and that. And now you got to get the, you know, less about the stuff and more about the soft skills, more about the, the hard, the software rather. Um, I, I guess, is there any, is there any way that kind of being a, a gun owner and somebody who's so like very trained in this thing that we do that's maybe been kind of negative or maybe, maybe frustrating. And I, I don't know if there's an answer to that, but in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, well maybe, maybe you feel like you're a little bit more paranoid than you want to be just because you, the exposure, the ignorance would have been bliss. That's, that's where my mind goes. Is there any way that you feel like it's kind of like, okay, because of this firearms skill and knowledge, there's been some frustration. Maybe I'm, I'm training too much and it's taking away from my kids. I, I don't know. Where, where are you with that? I've had those thoughts. I still have those thoughts. Every time I leave the house to go to the range and, you know, and either, either teach a class or take a class or go to a match, uh, there's always those thoughts that, you know, I could be spending that time with my wife and my son, you know? And if that's the case, then I would never leave the house just quit your job and stay home Um, or find a job that, you know, you can work from home. And instead of working, you could just spend all that time with your wife and your kid. And, um, you know, at some point you need to leave the house and actually do the things that your wife and kid are expecting you to do. Yeah. Um, You need to go out and bring home bacon. You need to, you know, get the skills that you need to prepare for a home invasion or, you know, a street robbery or a carjacking or, you know, an active shooter uh, event or anything like that. Um, You need those skills. You need those skills. The, um, or you need to, you know, go out there and earn enough cash to where you can afford a backup generator or, you know, you can afford like some backup food or some backup water. You gotta be able to afford that stuff because when the grid goes down or when the flag goes up or whenever anything happens, you're going to be that guy. And you're going to hate the fact that you didn't prepare for that. Mm. And in that moment, there's nothing that you can do. Um, and so the main thing that really kind of drove me was I might be oversharing at this point, but there was a night back in, I think it was, it was 2012. It was 2012. No, wait, I think it was 2014. It was 2014. It was March of 2014. Um, I didn't know this at the time, but there were, there were drug dealers living next door mm. and, um, You don't live that life very long before, you know, you end up encountering some violence. And so next door, there was some shooting 
it sounded like it was in my front yard. And I didn't know if it was a drive by or, you know, some dudes just got drunk and, you know, or high or whatever and just started busting out shots. I didn't know what was going on. I had no idea. And all I know is this was before I met my wife, this was before I had my son, but there I was, Marine Corps veteran, right? Utterly unprepared for the situation. Nothing in my training had ever taught me this. So I was hiding under the bed with my Beretta in one hand and my phone in the other. And I pick up my cell phone and I call 911 and I get a, I get a busy signal. I get a wow. busy signal when I call 911. And that just kind of nailed down into me. There is no one else. There's no one else that's going to be there to protect me or to protect my family, protect my son. It's just all up to me. So I need to have those skills. I need to have the awareness. I need to have, I need to understand attack cues. I need to understand, you know, less lethal techniques. I need to understand de-escalation. I need to understand, you know, um, vehicle, uh, uh, vehicle close combat. I need to understand, you know, emergency procedures. I need to understand legal. I need to understand medical. I need to understand, you know, um, you know, just uh, uh, verbal judo, de-escalation. I need to understand those things. And so, because it's not going to be anyone else, it's just going to be me. It's going to be me yeah. that's, that's going to be responsible for. And I've worked all these scenarios out of my head as well. Like, is there ever going to be a world where my wife and my kid are better off without me there in a certain situation? And man, I can't think of one. I really can't. So now there is a difference, right? Like you, there is that thing, right? Like actually preparing for the worst day of your life. There is that or the worst week of your life or whatever else have you. Um, but there's also an opportunity for you to actually go out there and interact with other guys, other people in your tribe, other fathers and other shooters that, you know, uh, that, that believe the same things as you do, that have the same goals as you do. And that ends up re recharging my batteries a very fair amount to where I can go back to work and I can, you know, continue to do the stuff that, you know, brings home bacon. So, um, is there, there has to be a balance. I think some people can go so deep into this thing that they're, they may be literally taking food away from your baby's mouth and, mm -hmm. And, you know, like maybe you don't need that fifth staccato. Maybe instead you need to get, you know, a high chair for your kid, you know, or maybe you need to get a, you know, a better baby seat, you know, uh, there's, there's things like that. Um, yeah. She had a good baby seat. Two fifty. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> That's the I'm low sure end. More, you know? <laughs> I'm sure there's way more expensive ones, but like, <laughs> yeah. you're right. So, and. But there yeah. is such a thing that, you know, yeah. I've seen guys in the space that, you know, that ruined their marriages because they were training so much. They were shooting so much. You know, I, uh, I've i seen folks where, you know, it's damaged the relationship that they have with their kids. So, you know, I just, it sucks, you know, um, like particularly for firearms instructors, it's really hard for those guys for, for as far as instructors, because, well, a lot of the classes that we teach are on Saturdays and Sundays. Mm -hmm. Well, when are those soccer matches going to go? Mm -hmm. They're going to be on Saturdays and Sundays. When are those football matches going to go? You know, like when is the most time you're going to have? Like if you if you could pick a day on the calendar where you could actually spend an uninterrupted eight hours with your kid, when's the most likely is that going to be? Is that going to be during the week or is it going to be on the weekend? Absolutely. And, and if you say no to that, instead of, you know, instead of spending time with your, your, your family, there's only going to be so many of those you can string together in a row before you can start doing some, some damage you can't repair. Yeah. So that, that's in, in the corporate world, you start getting written up, you get your verbal and you get your first yeah. written yeah. and then <laughs> you get your second written and then uh, you get your final. What's after that? Yeah. My, and so, my only saving grace is that, you know, I found myself a queen that she she understands what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. And she also understands that if if for any reason she I don't even know the I don't even have to know the reason. If for any reason she needed me to stop all this, if she just needed me to quit, then I'd do it in a heartbeat. Yeah. Yeah. That's 
that's the most important thing. <laughs> Not to talk about people's stupid Hollywood drama. Recently, and this is a lesson on communication and expectations and setting expectations. Recently, a guy, guy named uh, Jonah Hill came out that some ex-girlfriend of his was mad or really, I guess she experienced a, a, some form of trauma. Um, and I, I'm not trying to make fun of her, but I, she experienced something and she was sharing, uh, maybe inappropriately sharing that, I guess after they started dating, he switched up on her and said like, Hey, I need you to take down your swimsuit pictures, nothing revealing, stop hanging out with these guys, stop hanging out with your trashy friends, all these things. I mean, you, and then he said at the end of the message that she revealed, you can keep doing these things, but if, if so, I'm going to release you to do that. I'm not going to force you to stay with me, um, which, okay. And the my biggest takeaway from that, I'm, I don't have some sort of big, you know, thesis to say, but my biggest takeaway from that is the communication in the relationship at the beginning, the expectations and the expectations at the end were vastly different. It had to be. I mean, if you have some some sort of a coming to Jesus salvation moment where, oh, now you have these morals and values that are incongruent, okay, well, then you need to just, you know. But what, I'm relating this to what you're saying in this, in this regard. There is an expectation and an understanding that you both have. And the expectation is she knows exactly what you need to do. And she trusts you. There's trust. She trusts you to not take advantage of that agreement. You know, you're not just going to spend an additional day that you don't need to, you know, not, not that you don't have the the freedom to maybe to take a day, but you're not going to say, okay, well, I'm just going to, I'm frustrated with you. I'm just going to spend all day at the range, even though I've really only planned on spending two hours, which is the temptation. I get it. But that that's where the trust comes in. The trust and expectations, right? And when you, when you look and you say like, oh shoot, wives are mad because this and this and that. And you know, people are going to say, well, women, right? I'm like, yeah, but no, like the expectations. <laughs> yeah. Was it set? And do we still have that trust? You know, does she trust you to do the right thing no matter what? You know? And if so, I, I believe in your, in your situation where it seems like your lady is just really solid and not just, you know, floating in the wind, you know, whatever that means. Um, I respect that you said what you said, and I hope that we can all find something like that or take what we have and build in the, in the direction that says like, hey, do you trust me? And if not, like, let's build some trust so that I can do what I need to do. I'm not going to take advantage. Not going to, you know, see the inch and take my mile. I'm going to do what I have to do. And I'm going to be here for my family when I can, you know, and I'm, for me, my, my, the hardest thing for me is a lot of the work that I do is, is on the phone. You know, it's posting, it's yeah. thinking of this is, Oh, what's the right caption? Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> let me look through the old gallery, see if there's something old that I never really posted, you know, cause I don't feel like going making new content right now. And does that take up family time? The answer is yes, it does. Um, and I'm trying to find ways to adjust that and to be receptive, even though I'm, I can be a little prideful at times. And to accept and, and understand that, like, hey, like, we can wake up an hour earlier and address these things, or, you know, we can we can carve out this time, and set the expectation, say, like, okay, from this time to this time, I need this time, and the other times, and I'm, I'm saying I'm oversharing, I, I am oversharing, but I'm I'm hoping that people can understand, like, this is hard, <laughs> you know, yeah, it's hard, it's hard to be a professional, it's hard to be a man, you know, it's 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 hard to be anyone trying to do a thing, you know? And yeah. I've been going on for a minute and I really want to just say, I appreciate you coming on and sharing that, that vulnerable moment you had um, several years back. I know you didn't have to share that. Um, and I hope that people 
cannot see that as just some fearful moment, but a, like a, a moment that you, you took that to heart and you learned from it. And you said like, okay, I understand. Now this is my motivation. This is my driving factor. Um, I've been in this situation and I've, I've been in a similar situation. There was no gunshots fired. And I think you, maybe you, you heard about it, but I realized that, man, people are far away and you might not be able to dial 911 before things start popping off. And at that point, no one's going to hear you scream. So, yeah. Unfortunately, I've heard like a lot of, there are some 911 calls that you listen to as an instructor and, you know, like in some of these classes and the good guy does not always win. No. Um, the only thing that 911 can do is, you know, they can lock the report, they can get people there and they're going to be running red lights trying to get there in time, but they're not going to get there in time. They're not, you gotta, you gotta take care of it yourself. You're mm -hmm. on your own. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, I've had some security training and, I don't think you need any sort of certification to, to look at the times and say like, okay, well, if I'm in a self-defense situation or if I'm in like a, a, a in defense of other situation, which is that's, that's what security generally is, um, between the times that the, the incident starts and ends, it's five and 10 minutes. So can you survive long enough for somebody to actually hit, the, hit, hit send on that call, communicate the information, and then have those guys who are five to 10 minutes away, hopefully, hopefully they're that far away and they can actually respond. Because guess what? If it's Snowmageddon, if there's any sort of social unrest, because I mean, that doesn't happen here in America, but you know, social unrest, it could happen, right? <laughs> Potentially. Um, if, if half the city's on fire because there's competing forces, like literally setting the city on fire, like literally, they're not coming for you. I am sorry. And I, I hate that. I hate that the conversation is kind of like a little bit fear mongery, I, but I think we're trying to paint some reality. Like you got to have a tool or a plan. And if your plan fails, okay, at least you had a plan. That's where I'm at. Yeah. 